Hey everybody and welcome to another Learn to Digitize video. My name is Sue and I'm a Hatch educator and today we are working in Customizer and we are going to do a few really cool things and we're going to walk through how you can do everything that you need in Customizer and it's awesome. So let's start with bringing in a design and I'm going to do this a couple of ways. My favorite way is through the awesome organization of my designs. So you can reach that quickly and easily. Design one is the one that I'm on. I can go to my designs and it's going to show you all the designs you have. Now these ones come with Hatch and all you have to do is double click on one of them. This is one of my favorites, the anchor. It stitches out so beautifully. Um, but you see everything is really well organized and you don't have to leave Hatch to find all of your designs. And you can search them. You can search them by type. I have it on everything, all in one design. So EMB art those kind ascending descending you can sort by name you can search you can change your view on them extra large icons which I find actually really enjoyable if you change it to extra large icons um, a great way to organize your embroidery and to make hatch work even faster for you because you can find all the designs that you want there's also some projects in there if you wanted say I have a design one of the ones that we're going to use is on my desktop you go to this PC and you go to desktop and again I still have it on large icons and we can see this is the design that I'm going to pull in now this design is from um, John Deere's ultimate stash and it's stunning and that's one of the designs we're going to pull in so using my designs is the best way in my opinion to organize yourself to really view your designs and look you can see all of the detail work on the dinosaur um, and on the anchor and you can scroll through them, you can sort them out in different folders, and you can find what you need quickly and easily. And I think it's great because I like to see the detail work on it, and I think that's great for viewing your designs. Um, you won't call it up and go, okay, I didn't exactly want that you know, and do it again and again. So it saves you a lot of time. And I love to be organized. And especially I have uh, a lot of embroidery designs that I've made or that I've downloaded. And I love the organization of it. So that's the first way to bring in a design. And I personally, like I said, I think it's the best way. It saves you a lot of trouble. And all you do is double click um, on any of the files in here and bring it in and there you have your anchor absolutely perfect now another way to do it is new from design you don't have to you know do it new we are going to go to we just want it on the desktop and there it is and you double click on it and it brings in that design fantastic another way you can open a new design so you have a blank page and you can insert design right here insert design and the picture the icon tells it all and if you don't remember what it means you just hover over and it's going to tell you insert an existing embroidery design into the current design so if you want a new page and a design it's that one if you want to just insert the design and what we're working in and that happens to be design three that's how you do it so let's do it that way double click and it brings it in and it's perfect look at that design it's amazing so a couple of ways of doing it you can also get to the manage designs from the toolbox tab and that's easy enough just click on it there you are again so a couple ways of doing it let's go back to design number three um, and let's go to add some lettering to it now there's a lot of things we can do with lettering i kind of like this design oh we should probably put a hoop around it so we see how much room we have for our lettering and you can simply 
click on the hoop and that brings in a four by four. That's not what I want because obviously that hoop is too small and you don't want to be resizing any stitch file designs. This design was uh, set up, created and digitized for this size. You may be able to reduce it a little bit. I don't recommend reducing any designs at all because they were digitized at the size that they want it to be. So you need to get a bigger hoop and I would right click on it and there you go. You can pick your machine. Now I'm up in my studio so I don't actually have a machine hooked up to this. But if I did, that's what I would do. So let's, uh, let's pick, what are we going to pick? An entrepreneur. I'd like one of those. I don't have one. Let's pick my single needle machine. So I have an allure. So baby lock allure. So I'm going to pick that and it's going to give you the hoop sizes that go with that machine. So we want to pick the right size for it. It's uh, probably the big one. Show hoop. I always, um, you can leave automatic centering on, but I like to turn it to manual just because of my workflow. Either works fine. The hoop kind of moves around to keep everything centered. I like to do it myself. So let's pick that. That looks great. We're not going to be able to, with this hoop, we need to turn it around, but uh, we're not going to be able to put writing here because that's the extent of the hoop. If you want to change the hoop, so that's 300 by 180, you can go to custom hoops and this is super handy. So if your machine is not listed, you don't have to worry about that. You can create your own hoop. All you need to know is the size of the hoop. So that's five, let's change it around. So 5.9 by, it was 7.8. So I'm kind of flipping it around and we're gonna call it um, angel hoop or you can call it whatever your machine is. So let's say brother um, six by seven or something like that or eight, I guess it is. Whoops, sorry. And that is the sewing field for it. So let's save hoop and now it's right there and you can pick it and look, it changes. Obviously I didn't do it correctly, but that is how you set up your hoop. You can also, let's go back to, we're gonna right click on it. Let's go back to the way it is set up. Let's go okay. Now for this one, you can turn this around and, and put your lettering in sideways. I don't recommend it. Why don't we turn the hoop? Let's do it like that. Let's turn the hoop. Now we can see exactly how much room we have. What I'd like to do too is I want to change the background to something like what I'm going to stitch it out on. So I am going to do it black because I'm going to stitch it on black. Let's make the color inside the hoop match as well. So okay. And let's do that again because that didn't quite work now, did it? cancel background click on background color inside the hoop you can also change it to be a shirt or different or if you have custom uh, shirt you can put in there you can do the factory fabric that's actually kind of cool we can click on that let's do that pure cotton let's pick a knit uh, I won't be stitching it on a knit however it looks really cool Let's go there and there we go. And if you zoom in, we can take the grid off as well. So I'm just going to click on the grid and turn the grid off. Now we can see really clearly what we're doing. Now I'm zooming in and out with my mouse scroll key and I find that pretty handy. And notice um, I have true view on and I really like true view. I don't use it all the time. That is stitch view. But because I changed the background to black, we can now see the stitches a lot better and you can see the design a lot better because I think it was meant to stitch out on something dark. So by changing the background dark, it makes it look even better. And now you can see the essence of the design so much better. And I like doing that. If you don't want the hoop, you can just click it off. I'm going to leave it on because I think it looks cool. So there we go. Now we're all set up. Now, if I want to move this up or down, all I'm doing is left click and drag. This is called a bounding box. These dotted lines, it's a bounding box. 
to select it and you know you've selected it when it turns pink like that. And let's just drag, left click, drag it down and let's go ahead and add some lettering. I also wanted to point out if you wanted to change, you notice all my measurements, um, except for the hoop measurements, they're always in millimeters. If you wanted to change the uh, inches to centimeters, depending on what you understand, if you notice when I click on and I have my angel selected, all of these functions turn up and these are fantastic by the way um, again i don't re recommend reducing the size too much but you can a little bit and that is a quick way of doing it we can mirror the design with one click mirror back that doesn't make any difference this one doesn't work really well with our angel but we can mirror up and down if we wanted to and then we can turn the angles of it just by clicking here so that's super handy but I'm off track again. If you wanted to change the size and you're looking and saying, okay, well, I can't find that, deselect everything and you notice it's right up here, right beside your background. And you can change it from metric to US, depending on what you like. I'm gonna leave it on US just because I like that for today. But if you need to select back, just remember it won't work otherwise. Lots of functions though when you click on it, if you don't do a bounding box, you can also just click on this. Hatch brings all of this in as one object. So I'm just in the habit of doing a bounding box and the bounding box will come in handy if we wanna select the lettering as well as the design and we can group a few things. But let's get to our lettering. So I wanna do lettering, so I go to my toolbox and I click on lettering and click again right here on lettering. We have a choice of lettering, monogramming, and reshape, and we'll go through those. So let's pick lettering and all of this fun stuff comes up. And let's type, what can we do? Let's just do digitizing made. Easy for the lettering. And if you notice as I'm typing it, it's right there. It's uh, It just comes on automatically. Looking with our hoop, I think that looks fine. Now, I'd like to change the font. There's nothing wrong with the block font. I happen to have um, the fonts that come with Hatch, but I also have a whole bunch of ESA fonts that you can get. And I absolutely, this is one of my favorite things, I love fonts and I like to flip through them because there is, in fact, the right font for the job. And I think while the block looks great, I think something different would look better. I really think it would look better. So I'm gonna start with, this is Alex Brush it's called, and I just clicked on it. Now I really like that. If I wanted to flip through the fonts, once I have it selected like that, you just use the up and down arrow key and you can see how it changes and you can type out your lettering and you can, you know, flip through all the ones that you want. And I kind of like some of these. The scripty ones are nice. Back to block. Block is just a little too boring for what I want. Book script, see I like that one that's called Boys Are Gross, which is rather funny. And by the way, on the ESA fonts, the lettering here, 20 mm at the end of it, that is the size recommendation. So it's really handy having them. If you didn't know, fonts have a recommended a maximum and a recommended minimum size. So if you go below that, if I wanted to make um, that one, boys are gross, 10 millimeters. It's really not going to work. And plus that's really tiny, but there are small fonts. If you see some of these are really small as well. Um, let's pick a nice one. I like that the Celtic hand. I think that is going to work. And if I wanted it a little bigger, I just left click and drag. There we go and then we can left click and drag and move it in. And you see these boxes here, let's zoom in a little bit so it's a little bit clearer. When I click on it, it shows up, you can see the pink 
around, that means I have it selected. But there's boxes and they do different things. If you click on it again, you notice the boxes go clear. Now, when they're clear, that means you can change the angle and I'm just left click and dragging on that node. If you wanted it like that, um, we can go to edit, undo, rotate. We have to go, it's control um, Z for the shortcut. I just use my mouse. Um, so, and if you click on it again, you notice the boxes are solid. You can do a little bit of stretching and you can make it a little bit bigger if you wanted to or make it a little bit smaller, but be careful of your measurements, of course. Let's deselect that. Let's go on to metric and let's select it again and we can see the size and all the information that we want. And that's a perfect. And that's a little bit a little bit small. Why don't we make it whoops? Why don't we make it a little bit bigger? So that's how you resize it. First basic resizing. And just remember where you're you're clicking when you're clicking on it, what these things look like. And that's uh, this is skewing it. If you see the little diamonds, you see what I'm doing now? I'm holding it. And if you wanted to quickly, um, that actually looks great. I'm going to leave it like that. And I was just playing around. But if you wanted to just leave it like that, that's great. So you see the diamonds? Those are for skewing stuff. And you can skew up and down. See how it's kind of stretching it? Um, I think that's great. Let's do undo, undo skew. Um, so if you wanted to put a slant in it, there is another spot here that you can do it. But if you just want to play around like I did, that's an easy way of doing it. So let's see all of the fun stuff that we can do. So the first thing we can look at, let's go to our fill. Now, right now, if you look at it and I have true view on, if you take it off, you can see the same thing. I just think it looks really good you know, basically what it's going to stitch out to be. Let's go to the next tab here called fill and you can change the fill that's in the lettering. You have to select it first. So if you do that and it didn't work, that's why you have to have it selected. So you can right now it's on satin. You can change it to tatami, which doesn't look as great as I thought. Um, but satin stitches are the look that you want. Generally, if you're going to make it really big and the satin is going to split, then you can switch to tatami. 3D satin is just really thick satin. Now these letters aren't big enough, but you can change it to an embossed design. Um, it's not going to look great because you can see it. I mean, it's different. We can make it a lot bigger and do it. But let's go back to satin because that's how I want my lettering to look. We can go over here to effects and you can put a feather edge on your lettering. And I really like that um, in some cases. This font, not so much, but it does give it a really cool effect. So you can do side one. You can do both sides and you can do side two. See now side two looks a little bit better. If you don't like it as I don't for this one, you can go to remove effect and you get back to where you are now. I'm still selected. Let's go to stitching. Now here's a few things that you can work with. You can change the underlay back to the size that I want. See, that's the other great thing about ESA fonts and built-in fonts is that you can resize them. And as long as you don't go too small, your lettering is going to look fantastic. So let's take that second underlay off. You can, if you want to make the letters a little bit thicker um, and you have to be careful doing it, you can take on or off the pull comp. See how it, it almost has a bold effect. This is the standard, the default for pull comp, but let's do something crazy. Let's put it at, you know, 60 or something really fat. And it makes it thicker and it happens to work okay with this font. However, I noticed they're so thick 
the middle of the A doesn't show up and I don't really like that. So then you could play around and you could put it to maybe 40. That's better. I think this one is going to work at the 17. And now you can see the definition in the A a little bit better. But you can play around with it. Just be really careful that you're not making your letters uh, not work. And that is excellent. We can uh, go to lettering and we can take off our Celtic and we could put something uh, different. Let's just go back to the block. Where is it? Block two is my favorite. And you might see it a little differently there. So it's under stitching. And let's, uh, let's just make this a little bit smaller. Let's make it, and it's still got the skew on it. So let's make it, I actually really like it with the little skew. Let's make it straight up and down. That's almost a little back, but let's click it again. It's all about playing. You'll get it right. And there we go. That is perfect. I like that. So let's try it with the same amount, the crazy amount, six. And see, that kind of works. But again, right here, we're kind of closing up the A's a little bit. Um, if that's the look that you want, we're also closed up the E, and I don't really like that. So it worked a little bit better on the other font. Not so much on this one. Let's bring it back to 40 and see if we like it. That would be okay. That's still a bit tight in there. But if you wanted a really chunky, bold look, that's that's one way of doing it. Again, just be super careful with it. So let's put it back to the default. And auto jumping connectors, you can just leave all of that stuff. If you need to mess around with it, if you want to take tie-in and tie-ins and tie-offs off, <laughs> then you can turn them off here. So let's go back to lettering and let's change the slant to I think let's try 20. And that, uh, it's a skew, but they call it a slant. And if you know the numbers, then that's fantastic. You can uh, change the width. If we put it back to 100%, that's the original size instead of stretching it. Um, slant we changed. Letter spacing, you can change that. Now down here, letter sequence, if you are putting this on a hat, obviously the angel is a little bit too big for a hat. But if you were just doing the lettering and you wanted to change the direction that the lettering stitches, so for hats is a good example. This this is from center out, so it's going to sit stitch center, side, 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 and finish it off like that. Where we have it now is left to right, so it's going to start at the D and work its way all the way across to the Y. If you want it to go opposite, you can do click on that and it'll start at the Y and go all the way to the D. So, okay, let's keep it selected. Now, I'm going to scroll back a little bit. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so we can play around with it a little bit. Just a little bit bigger. I'm going to keep the slant on it because I really like it. And I want it to curve around um, the angel. So it makes it really pretty. Say you were doing this on a towel. I personally did this angel and I framed it and I gave it to my mother-in-law for Christmas and she loved it. But let's click on the changing it. And wow, look at that, just like that. Now maybe we do want to take that slant off. Yep, that looks fine. I really like it. If you want to make it a little bit bigger, you can still do that. And you just have to move it around. I want it to fit nicely in with the wings. And let's step back, I call it. Let's step back a little bit. And look at how great that looks. Let's fit it to the screen. Look at how great that looks. Now, if you wanted it curved and you wanted to play around with fonts, you can still do that. You can still um, use the up and down arrow keys. And look, see, that one's really pretty. Back to my Celtic, I kind of like that. Now, I want to select it and I want to change the colors. Now, well, obviously, I'm not going to do black, am I? Um, red and gold is nice. You can do green and gold. You can do gold and gold, or you can do kind of, uh, that's the gold color. You can 
yellow. No, I think I'm going to stick with red, but that's how easy it is to change the colors. You just click on it. So find your font, find your size, find your colors. It doesn't matter whatever order you do it in. Um, it works. All of it works really simply. Now, what if you wanted the lettering underneath? Then you can click on that and then place it. Now we would move our angel up and I'm just left clicking and moving and I'm just going to put the lettering nice and tidy in there. And that looks just as good as the first one. Now we can scroll down a little bit. Uh, we can do vertical writing if we wanted to, if we want, and it sets it up quite lovely. That's very readable. And you know what? That actually doesn't look bad. I'm a little surprised. That doesn't look bad. And I like the font and actually the size of it pretty closely spans the angel. So you could put a lovely message on here and it's very readable. Not all fonts work that way. It's uh, very reasonable. Now let's see. Now I want to duplicate it. So let me do that again. I probably did that too quickly. So I select it and I'm right clicking and holding and dragging at the same time. And that makes an exact clone of what you wanted. Now, obviously you don't want, um, you know, it to say the same thing. And also if you right click and drag and say you move it up here and then you have to spend time fixing it, let me delete that. If you right click, if you select it, so it's a left click, right click and drag and hold down the control key, it's going to keep it in exact lineup for you. So I'm holding my right mouse button down and I'm holding my control button down. And if you'll notice when I let go of everything, it is exactly in the same spot. And that's a very, very handy trick to use. And now, um, we can just change the lettering. So let's do loves hatch. And I find that's a quick way to duplicate the lettering. Now, obviously they're not in the same spot, but doesn't that look really cute like that? And if you want to play around with fonts, again, you just, uh, you know, change them around. But that is how many looks have we done just by adding lettering? Quite a few. And there's still more. Yes, there's more. So let's take this one and let's do a straight line. And this is kind of, you know, you can make really quick subway art like this. Um, but just by moving, adding lettering and moving it around, I think uh, other than that, that doesn't really work here, but we're going to, we're going to work on the loves hatch here. So I'm going to zoom in using my mouse button, um, mouse scroll wheel. Sorry. Now there's still more things we can do. There's so many things you can do with ESA fonts or the built-in lettering. Let's go to some lettering art. One of my favorite things to do. And I like to try different things. And you know what? That one actually looks okay because look how neat and tidy it fits in there. Obviously a little bit strange to do that with an angel, but you see what I'm getting at. Subway art, super easy, and you can make it fit in. Now you can, if you select it and you go to reshape, you can change it around. I'm just left clicking clicking and dragging the icons to make it fit. Now there's other shapes that you can do, but if it's just not quite what you wanted, you can make fine adjustments. Let's go back to select and let's go to remove art and we get right back to where we started from. And let's try another one. Now, if you click here on the more tab, we can bring these guys up and we can have a look. It just helps you. There's lines that you left click and drag. Now, if we wanted to fit this in, when we have it like this, we can see it a little bit better and we can pick a shape like this that would fit right in. Now that didn't move a whole lot. So what we can do is, sorry, select it and go to reshape and we can bring this part down quite a bit more. Now I'm distorting the letters, but doesn't that look cool? I think that's a great way of doing it. Uh, again, not so much with the angel, but you get the idea that that fits in very well. And by bringing this little part up 
it makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing. Now I fit that in quite nicely and I love the way the angles, the, the letters angle, and I think that looks great. Let's select it, let's remove art. Let's just try another one just for fun. Let's try, what can we try? I, I like this one, number 22, because I like the way it turns the letters. And again, we can go into reshape and there's a few things we can adjust. We can stretch it out a little bit more, but I love the way the letters, it's not a 3D effect, but it kind of looks it a little bit. And you can make, how about we make this one really small, careful again, not to go too small. But look how cool that looks. Let's deselect it so we can see it. Uh, again, with Subway Art, and again, there's so many things you can do with it, with simple lettering to change any embroidery design and make it custom and make it better. So shall we try one more thing? Why not? Because it's so much fun. Let's try, this is also one of my favorite shapes. And it's kind of like an arc and the way I've done it, it fits right in between uh, the angel's wings. And if you wanted to put another bit of lettering um, in there, you could, but it changes the overall shape of the whole design. And I love doing that. Lettering and fonts are some of my favorite things to do. So let's select it, let's remove art and we'll just go back to plain. Um, another thing we could do quite easily is um, lettering one, line one and line two. So loves hatch, um, we could put, so let's hit enter. So we leave a space, arrow key up, and let's just put the short form, DME. Now we're gonna have two lines and we click on here and we enter the center point and I'm gonna scroll out a little bit. So we're gonna enter the center point and I'm left clicking and I'm dragging and I'm making a circle that my lettering's gonna go on. And we're gonna make it quite big. We're outside our hoop and click again. If you wanna make an oval, you can, you can move it around. If you wanna keep it to a perfect circle, you simply hit enter and look what happens. And that's a little bit off, but you know what? Select it and we can move it around. You can shift select both so they both move at the same spot. Let's just pull it down a little bit and look at how easy that was to do. And they're curved ever so slightly. You'd be able to see the curve on this part a, a bit more if we had more lettering. But you can see that it's curved and you can see that it's around and even with the digitizing made easy along the side, look how great that looks. You can do that if you have three lines. It does line one, line two in the middle and line three at the bottom, but I didn't want lettering going through our lovely angel, so I didn't do that. Um, but look what we've got so far and it all fits nicely into the hoop. Now, if you wanted to see, oh, how much room do I have when that's centered? We're gonna right click and we're gonna do automatic centering and go okay and now it's perfectly centered inside the hoop and we see we have lots of room. We definitely have lots of room. Another thing we can do before we send it to our machine because we have lovely lettering, I think I'm gonna leave it like that, is we can go to our customized design and we can click on design information and we can see quite a few things with this. Um, Design name is Design 3 because I haven't named it yet. I would probably call it DME Angel 1. Fabric type, start point, and it gives you a little grade, which is kind of cute. So this one's perfect. It would stitch out lovely. And you can add a summary. So when you save it, the summary will show up. And it's really great. You can tag it. You can say who the author is. You can make a comment. Um, Angel stitches out better on dark fabric so you can remind yourself just a little bit. Let's go to our auto fabric and let's see what our choices are. So if I was gonna stitch this on, um, let's just pick something different. Uh, terry toweling, wool, generic. No, I don't wanna pick that. Linen, lycra, mesh, microfiber, so many to choose from. Um, poly cotton or polyester, let's do it. And it tells you the stabilizers that you need. So tear away times two, okay. And if you go back into our design information, 
it'll now in our uh, sorry and right here it tells you polyester topping backing tear away times two i love that i think that's fantastic um, we could mess around with the thread chart. We can go to auto start and end. So let's do the first stitch of the design and the last stitch of design. If you have a commercial machine or if you're doing a whole bunch of these and your, your machine doesn't go back to exact center, but if you want it to, that's what you do auto start at center and it's going to end at the center. So let's do last stitch so we don't have any of that. Um, there we go. And that'll stop it from putting a little stitch in there as well. Um, if you wanted to uh, add uh, another design, here's a quick way of doing it. You can do it up here, or if you have this open, which I find it really handy to have the toolbox open, insert design and it's the same thing let's just do another one because that's what i have on my desktop and that is how you add and merge designs now i see how my hooped my hoop moved it's trying to center it so i'm going to right click on my hoop and i'm going to manual because i don't want my hoop going around and if you didn't even want to do that you could just click and take the hoop off for now because we are working on things so let's change our angel to blue no purple that i like the gold the best i guess we could make it brighter i really like the gold color in it but uh you know no harm in trying different colors because i have the background black then i can really have a general idea of what it's going to look like I find the gold stunning. I suppose silver would work as well. See, I kind of like silver as well. Um, it's just made to work really, really, really well with um, the, the style of it. So let's put DME here and leave that and let's change that to also gold and this one to silver and we don't want too many uh color changes and we want them to be optimized so this is what i'm going to be showing you next um it would kind of there would be a lot of <laughs> a lot of uh, color changes and we want it to stitch all the silver and all the gold and then the red last so you can uh go to optimize color changes and it changes it from four to five. This will increase the number. Oh, so we didn't really need to do anything. Isn't that awesome? Um, we want it to decrease. So it is in order and it is it, it will work right. So I suggest running that through so you don't have too many color changes. So this is how I want my design. Now I don't have a hoop big enough on the machine I selected, but it you know we can just pretend that it would all fit in. And if you have your machine hooked up via USB to your computer, you could just pick it and you can click turn on your machine, click transfer, and it's going to send it right away to your machine. If you wanted to go on output design, auto start and end, we, st we worked on, remember it was this one, um, save design as export design is how you save it to your machine file and you see you have a big selection here of machine files um, which is fantastic so you can pick the one that you want and save it i am going to cancel right now transfer the design to your machine now here's one thing that a lot of people miss is you can if you want to, um, I'm going to delete one of these guys because it doesn't make any sense if I'm doing. If you were going to stitch this on a shirt um, as it is like this, if you're going to stitch it on a shirt, you can do a print. You can print the design. I'm going to, I don't have a printer hooked up here. I'm going to do a print preview and I'm going to show you everything that it shows you. It gives you a lovely template an absolute lovely template for your design and you can cut that out and you can it shows you all of our jump stitches which is fine because we didn't really work on that um, but it sh gives you a nice template so you can cut that out and you can hold it up to whatever you want but look at all the information it gives you 
Total stitches, 1,244. Now it's going to tell us millimeters, so let's close this and let's select off. Let's change it to US and now let's go to print preview. And um, it's changed two inches, so if you know your inches, then it's fine. There are three colors in total to the design. Uh, the zoom is one to one, so it's it's actual size of it, which I really like. So it gives you the stitch count, it gives you the exact sizes. The fabric type that we're stitching it on is polyester. The stabilizer is uh, no topping, backing, tear away times two. It tells you the hoop that we have selected. It even tells you how much bobbin you need. And here is your color sequence. So if you have rather complicated embroidery and some of them, they do get big with a lot of color changes, print this out and you have an amazing record of what you're doing. You can gather up all your threads, put them in order, and you can cross them off. Actually, if you, you know, if you were doing something special and you wanted to remember what you did, you could grab a binder, print one of these out, make your notes. There's lots of spaces for notes. So if you have to do this job again, you will have the information right in front of you and you can just look it up. And you know, if you had it named, I didn't name anything, the name would be right there. So tons of information, even before you stitch, tons of information and it works out really well. I tend to print out um, my templates. I think it's awesome. Another thing you can do if you wanted to send it to someone, you can capture design image and it's going to capture a PNG, so a, basically a picture of your design with the true view on so it looks awesome. So you can do the whole design, you can do the window, what is in the window, or you can set it up. You can include or, or not include the background fabric. I think it's really cool with it included. So you can save to desk, you can send via email, you can save and send it. And it tells you the screen, the bitmap resolution, which happens to be the screen re resolution, which is 95 DPI. So it'll be a pretty good picture. And that is great to show someone this is what it's gonna look like. And you can, once you hit OK, you can pick a place to save it and save away and change the name of it too because you can change it for a picture. And that gives you all the things that you need to bring in an embroidery design, add lettering, change the font. My goodness, we did a lot of things. Change the font and changing designs and making them personal, working with the ESA and built-in fonts. That is how we do it here inside Hatch Embroidery Software Customizer Edition. Great, great program. And I think you guys will have a lot of fun and this will stitch out absolutely gorgeous. I love the font. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoy personalizing just about everything with Hatch Customizer and I'll see you guys in the next class. Thank you.